Hey guys, how's it going? Hey, Ezra. Hi. Ezra, hello. Hi. This is the greatest day of my life. How are you doing? I am so excited. I just, I, I think I like take breaks from Harry Potter every now and then to try and like integrate with normal people. But I yeah. love it, love, love, love it. Like watching this, getting all geeky. It's like, oh, I'm back home. Yeah. You don't have to pretend anymore. Yeah, yeah. Totally. totally. Especially because you spent how many years making these films? Um, like five years, uh, 14 to 18, 19. So when did you get into them? I So I was like six and my dad read me the first one. And I just, I loved it so much. Mm -hmm. And then it, it, you know, it became this huge self-soothing mechanism for me through my adolescence and you know around the time when the last book came out and then when you guys made the last movies I was at that age so I was about eight years old and I was reading like all these girly books and my mom was like oh we need to open your mind a bit and then I didn't want to but she was reading it to my brother and I listened to it and I just was obsessed I just wow. enraptured and so I read them eight all the way through and that became my thing because I didn't really have any other talents. That became like, I am the Harry Potter girl. I was very proud to be a huge fan girl. Right, yeah. You're the Harry Potter You're geek the and that gives you value, mm -hmm. yeah. I was also a bit of a problem on set though for that reason where I'd be like, why have you cut this? Totally, you know? tell me about it. Yeah, why yeah, yeah. these characters talking? Oh my know? gosh, I can't even imagine. And I knew everything about my cast members as well because like, it comes to a point where the books aren't enough and you need to start being obsessed with the actors' lives. And again, <laughs> I knew all their birthdays. I knew Daniel Radcliffe's wow, dog's that's names. so I knew Emma sweet. Watson's cats. But it wasn't Why is that a problem? Oh, because I'd be like, happy birthday to your cat. <laughs> and they'd be like, you, you are terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did, I, wouldn't that put you in a nice, like, natural Luna Luna, Lovegood exactly. oh, chemistry no. with those actors, yeah, though? Totally. So maybe you're they just like, a methodical girls. genius. I like that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's watch some should. scenes. So what we're here we're to do, I don't know going. if we've even talked about it, but it's the most exciting day because we get to watch pieces of Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald, and we're going to talk about literally everything about them. If you are one of the people who has decided to watch this, we're just going to presume that you're kind of with us and that maybe you're also a nerd and that you're ready for this sort of thing. Uh-oh. There he is. He's watching the flight. He's like Norman Bates right now. Is he about to kill them? Oh! Wandless magic like we've never seen. Yeah. That was like a spontaneous Protego with no yeah. wander words. Prisoner is secured and ready to travel. Abernathy! Do you remember Abernathy from the first film? He's just kind of Vaguely. skeezy. Dodgy vibes. Dodgy vibes. We found his wand hidden away. And we found this. Oh, they found that. What is that? That's important. Bye. Oh, it's the elder right? one. Oh, so that's where the got, careful oh, fan will get Abernathy. it. Abernathy. Yeah, careful fan will be like, why notice. does he have an elder wand? Yeah, an elder wand. Yeah. Oh my god. He's like, I has a secret. Oh, something's wrong with your face, dude. Polyjuice! It's Polyjuice. Wow. Oh, what's he just done? Incredible magic. How is he doing that? How's he doing that on the carriage even, you know? All the wandless magic that he's been doing, and like now he has the Elder Wand back. A lot of yoga. Wow, magic look at yoga. that, look at that. But he did that wandless. That was pretty damn lucky. See that, that was just sadistic. That was a sadistic way. Yay, oh, what well, a good he scene. Got away. He's 
begun. The crimes like, have begun. Yeah, yeah. It, that is just like you watch the scene. It's like okay, that didn't last long. He probably just starts meditating when he's when he's captured because he's like, oh, it'll pass. I'm gonna find totally. And you remember the line when he reveals himself and then you know he says, "Do you think you can hold me?" That was nice. Right. <laughs> and Serafina Pickery says, "We'll do our best, Mr. Grindelwald." <laughs> I think the whole thing with Grindelwald, too, is that he is a brilliant manipulator. Oh, my God, yeah. You know? Which we see later on. Which is interesting in the context of who his best bud was. Mm. You know? Because they're both manipulators, right? They're both users. Dumbledore. Totally. You know? For and the good. For, but whose line is that? What did we just end up saying? For the greater good. Oh, that's from his house. Yeah, Nurmgaard. That's Grindelwald's hidey hole. And he had a prison. But then they yes. put him in. That's right. Forever. Yes. We knew that he was the darkest wizard before Voldemort. Right. And we knew that in 1945, Dumbledore defeated him. It's in... Um, it was on a Chocolate Frog card. That's where we first learned about it. it like, right. I mean, so we, we know, know that they were close. And that they had this ideological connection. Right. Twin T flames. Exactly. Yeah. Twin flames. And you agree about radical ideas. And right. you agree about... And then... There's this thing that happens, I think, when it's a real sort of dynamic where when people mature, someone might change change their mind. Mm. Dumbledore looks in the mirror of Erised and sees Grindelwald. What does the mirror of Erised show you? Sorry, spoiler. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. Are you oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. So, what does the mirror of Erised show us? Your the, deepest desire. Your, the most desperate desire of your heart right. is what Dumbledore says yeah. in the first book. Can we talk also about the necklace? Because they're like super. The necklace like, is important. When I was a kid, you'd have a heart necklace saying best friends. Yeah, totally. To heart, or, or, or friendship bracelets. bracelets or, totally. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like that's that, what isn't That's it? what the blood oath is. Intense. Yeah, that's exactly right. Because you can totally see them doing it as teenagers and it being such a romantic gesture. Totally. Of, of, and they, totally. And at that point, I share your heart. Like, yeah, it's yeah, so yeah. real. Why would I ever do anything to you? Yeah. Well, that's what I was wondering. I was like, oh, yeah, you gotta did, be careful did Grindelwald when you make manipulate him into that? Because knowing Maybe. he's one of the most powerful. Well, yeah. the most powerful wizard of all totally. time. Totally. And it's like, oh, if I can just check him off my list as not having to fight, that would be pretty convenient. Yeah. Let's watch the next scene. You told me where to find that traffic thunderbird, Dumbledore. You knew that I would take him home, and you knew I'd have to take him through a muggle board. I've always felt an affinity with the great magical birds. There's a story in my family that a phoenix will come to any Dumbledore. Not, not just answering a story. The they say my great-grandfather had one, and that it took flight when he died. Never to return. Which is exactly what happened. What's that? An address of a very old acquaintance of mine. A safe house in Paris. A safe house? Why would I need a safe house in Paris? I hope she won't, but should things at some point go terribly wrong, it's good to have a place to go. Oh my god, that's so dumb. Yeah. yeah. Terribly wrong. But forgive me for asking, why can't you go? I cannot move against Grindelwald. It has to be you. Putting a lot of pressure on me here, yeah. bud. Well, I can't blame you. In your shoes, I'd probably refuse to. But what is late? Good evening, Newt. Wait, no. Oh, come on. Oh, yeah, amazing. Everything we were just talking about, about Dumbledore being a manipulator, sure. is very sure. observed in this. Like, he's being a user, and he's being kind of open-handed about it, and he keeps just blatantly ignoring Newt's very valid questions and mm. concerns. Mm. And Newt is like... Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. On. Do you think Dumbledore would have accepted no? I mean, it's... I think with someone like Dumbledore... Accepted, maybe. Expected, never. And this card that he's given him, it kind of reminds you of, like, the Dumbledore's army coins. Yeah, totally. It? And just seeing that symbol, I think a lot of people will know that it must be Flamel. Because what's fascinating is there's places where the wizarding world meets with real esoteric history. And one of them is explored in this film. It's the biggest one. It's the biggest link between mm. sort of the mysteries of esoteric history and... Rowling's Wizarding World, which is Flamel. The Flamel, for instance, is a symbol 
associated with this real guy who lived that people believe was actually an alchemist who got this book from this guy that was written by Abraham the Jew that was some alchemical magic book that allowed him to achieve the philosopher's stone with his partner. So th they died at some point, and then there were all these theories like that they'd gone to India. Yeah. You know, and then there's some other weird accounts where, you know, like Paramahansa Yogananda or someone says that they go in India and there are some people who are super old, mm. like older than people think people can live. And the first men mention of it was like in Philosopher's Stone. Was when That's right. The first mention of Flamel is on that same chocolate frog, frog card, card that first mentions Grindelwald. It was so crazy how so many little parts of the universe were contained on this back of the chocolate frog card. Let's watch the next scene. Who's oh. this person? Nagini. You just dropped probably the biggest bomb on the Harry Potter universe yeah. in a, a decade. Yeah. Nagini. I know. And Super fans are going to scream. They're not going to hear the rest of this scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of our acting work lost. Yeah, right. You know? <laughs> but you know that it is a Sanskrit word oh. that means a feminine Naga. And the Nagas are the divine, sort of neutral ground snake beings of ancient Eastern wisdom traditions. Busts out the fire drakes, and she bites Skender. And now the circus is on fire. The Zuwu is out. So, Wait, so what can you tell me that you know about those creatures? So a lot of them actually are real. Again, now we're trying to look at the the Potterverse and the world that we live in just colliding because, you know, a lot of these are mythological creatures from different traditions. So the Zhu is from the Chinese tradition and the Kappa and the Oni are both real mythical creatures from the Japanese oh. tradition. And so it all blurs into this beautiful world of understanding that what we might think is unreal yeah. might be realer right. than we think. Oh, Hogwarts, what? Hogwarts, Hoggy, oh, Hoggy, Hogwarts. Hogwarts. <laughs> yes. What were the three biggest mistakes that you made last time? Teaching defense against the dark arts. What's going on? He's teaching duel right now. And you just got some. Not learning my from the first two. <laughs> <laughs> this is a school. Oh, it's McGonagall! Not. I'm the head of magical. It's McGonagall! With her Scottish accent. You know it right away. However long you keep me and my friends under surveillance, you're not going to discover plots against you, Travers, because we want the same thing, the defeat of Grindelwald. But I warn you, your policies of suppression and violence are pushing supporters into his arms. Whoa. Mm. Whoa. Yeah. Dumbledore in the ministry, man. A long history mm. of radical versus more middle-of-the-road politics. Right, and you think they'd have learned by the time the Harry Potter books happen. You think they'd have been like... Right, trust, trust Dumbledore. Dumbledore, totally. Your brother seeks to destroy you. This is a spoiler, and if you haven't watched the movie yet and you're the bizarre type of person who watches the DVD extras before the movie, I've never met you. And yeah, don't keep watching this because we're about to spoil literally the final reveal of the movie. There is a legend in your family that a phoenix will come to any member who is in dire need. It is your birthright, my boy. As is the name I now restore to you. Aurelius. Aurelius Dumbledore. Ah, uh, my God, you're a Dumbledore. I mean, NBD. Um, and the fact that Grindelwald tells you, who obviously had this 
long checkered relationship with Dumbledore, and now he's trying to control you. And he's known this somehow, so it explains his interest, why he was even in the Graves body. Right. Polyjuice style on. And Dumbledore, we don't know, but By the way, hashtag where is Percival Graves? Where is Percival Graves? Where is he? Where is the real one? Colin speculated that he was in a dish somewhere. Right. So, you yes. are an OG Dumbledore. Oh my gosh. Like, what? So weird. Could you have figured it out? No. I mean... Would have been no. a wild guess. No. Yeah. I mean, I hadn't, but David Heyman had stolen the thunder and told me that I was Dumbledore's brother. Right. <laughs> to which I went, Abbaforth? How could I be Abbaforth? <laughs> does my eye color change? How does that happen? How do I acquire the accent? I guess I could see it. I guess I could... I don't know. So then I talked to Joe, and Joe was like, have, have you figured out who you are? Or has anyone told you? And I was like... David Heyman told me and she was like oh I can't believe him and then I was like but I just don't understand like can you explain it to me like how, the accent and the eyes and she was like no no you're not Abbaforth <laughs> you're the unknown one you are Aurelius Dumbledore and she said it to me and I... oh really so a lot of fans and we've discussed this we think it's true believe that um, Ariana Dumbledore uh, Dumbledore's younger sister was an Obscurus. Right. Or, like, had... What do you say? Had an Obscurus? Was an Obscurus? Was an Obscurial. Was an Obscurial. Yeah. Because we know from the books that she was killed in a fight. Who killed her? Grindelwald? So this is page 459 of this edition, this sort of edition of the Deathly Hallows. I knew my brother, Potter. He learned secrecy at our mother's knee. Secrets and lies. That's how we grew up. And Albus? He was a natural. The old man's eyes traveled to the painting of the girl over the mantelpiece. It was, now Harry looked around properly, the only picture in the room. There was no photograph of Albus Dumbledore, nor of anyone else. Mr. Dumbledore, said Hermione rather timidly. Is that your sister, Ariana? Yes, said Aberforth tersely. I'm skipping a little because it's not yeah. Ariana related. When my sister was six years old, she was attacked, set upon by three muggle boys. They'd seen her doing magic, spying through the back garden hedge. She was a kid. She couldn't control it. No witcher wizard can at that age. Mm. What they saw scared them, I expect. They forced their way through the hedge, and when she couldn't show them the trick, they got a bit carried away trying to stop the little freak doing it. Yeah. Aberforth stood up. Tall as Albus, and suddenly terrible in his anger and the intensity of his pain. It destroyed her, what they did. She was never right again. She wouldn't use magic, but she couldn't get rid of it. It turned inward and drove her mad. It exploded out of her when she couldn't control it, and at times she was strange and dangerous, but mostly she was sweet and scared and harmless. Mm. Do you want to skip ahead to... And my father went after the bastards that did it and attacked them, and they locked him up in Azkaban for it. He never said why he'd done it, because if the ministry had known what Ariana had become, she'd have been locked up in St. Mungo's for good. They'd have seen her as a serious threat to the international statute of secrecy. This is what we're dealing with with Credence, like the Ministry of Magic and Makusa is trying to kill the obscurial because it's a you can't have an oh, obscurial going it. around because it's just killing nomads muggles you know mm. we had to keep her safe and quiet we moved house put about put it about she was ill and my mother looked after her and tried to keep her calm and happy i was her favorite he said and as he said it a grubby schoolboy seemed to look out through abaforth's oh. wrinkles and tangled beard so the fan theory is that she's a... Um, she was an Obscurial. An Obscurial. But yeah. has not been confirmed. Has not been confirmed. Do you think Dumbledore knows about you? I... Uh, so... This is stuff we can't talk about. Oh, oh my yeah, God! Yeah. Oh. Ah. I mean, we can talk about it later. We okay. just can't talk about it now. <laughs> It's, it's done. Not, it's all over. We don't uh, have enough time. We literally, we're running out of time, time because we it's can't crazy. do it because we just want to talk nerd. We'll do this again really soon. I, I love you. Thank you for doing this with me. <laughs>